everybody welcome back in today's lesson we're going to discuss feet again but this time i'm going to show you how to trim using a leather chuck so we're going to work on bottle forms and then use the leather chuck to uh, trim them i know that most of you are familiar with a bis chuck um, lots of studios have bis chucks lying around for this purpose or they have what they call a griffin grip the Griffin Grip is about a $200 uh, piece of equipment that frankly you don't need unless you just like to buy tools. I don't have one. Uh, this is how I trim. And I find that it's more accurate to trim doing it the way I do than the Griffin Grip. Um, especially in a community studio, the Griffin Grip gets used a lot and is very frequently out of round. So it's to your advantage to learn how to trim bottle shaped forms uh, the way I'm going to show you, which is using a leather chuck as opposed to a bis chuck. Again, occasionally I will use a bis chuck if I'm only um, trimming one or two objects. But if I know I'm going to make a whole bunch of bottle forms or vase forms with smaller tops and, and larger bottoms, then I'm going to go ahead and um, throw a chuck the same time that I'm throwing those bottles so everything is leather hard at the same time and they'll all work together. Using a leather hard chuck is going to make it easier for everything to stick together and gives you a better hold on the object that you're trimming. So let's get started. Okay, so I've left this little bottle form attached to the back. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do some trimming now. Let's attach to the back. I'm um, using my bison tools, which are handmade, um, expensive sharps tools. So, um, and they're well worth the money. When I say expensive, I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean they're worth it. Um, so I'm not going to let this hit my bat. Um, I'm going to stay above that, and then I'll just use an old cheap a uh, trimming tool to go the rest of the way so um i'm just going to begin by um getting rid of some of that clay right there while well, maintaining my form now pay attention to your profile um you know you don't I'm going to change how you've um, thrown the form too much. Do you want to get rid of any excess waste? And you want to continue that nice profile line. Um, you know, you don't want to take, you wouldn't want to take a sharp edge. You wouldn't want to carve this at just a 30 or 45 degree angle with no curve to it because the rest of the bottle has curves to it, right? So. I want everything to be, you know, on it to look like it has parts from several different forms. We want it to look like it all belongs together as one. So notice how I'm staying away from the bottom here. And I'm still tapering my um, tool in. So I have that nice teardrop um, shape right here. Now I'm going to use just the um, cheap, cheaper trimming tool. That bottom because these come in a set for $9.99. Um, I can replace them easily. I'm going to take that right down on my bat and then in to see where I'm at. I don't want to go too far um, because you're not, I'm not real sure at this point how much clay I have there. So Still have a nice form here. And I think to be safe, now's the time to cut this off. So, um, try to, you know, this is just a janky wire, right? But I'm going to try to use the straight part of it so I don't have any interruptions in the bottom part of my bottom. So I get a nice clean cut. So now, Remember that. Um, remember this, which was the chuck that we threw yesterday when we were making these bottle shapes, or when I was making these bottle shapes. 
So now I'm going to use that to trim the rest of the bottom of this. This already feels kind of light. I don't think I have to go any farther in. I'm going to push that up. First thing I'm going to do is make sure that it's level. These little inexpensive levels are perfect for this. I have several of them in my kit. I put so much clay on it, I can't see if it's level. And you want to make sure you check in on both sides. And now this one goes way off. So. So I'm just going to wet this real quick so those, that area will stick together a little bit better. But this is much easier to work with when you're working with a leather hard chuck than it is to work with a bis chuck. I mean, if that's all you have is a big bis chuck, like if I'm just making one bottle real quick for a demo or you know whatever I'm doing, I may not um, throw this, but um, yesterday, I threw several bottles for them, so it was worth my while to throw this chuck for trimming today. I've already used it twice. I changed the shape of it once. Let me start out with my small rib here. And so everything is still touching one another, even when I'm trimming. Just gonna go in. So it's nice and even. Here's the inside of my foot. I'm going to slow down my wheel a little bit because I don't want to change this profile too much. Just want to have a nice curve into the foot area. this corner right here right now to get the depth of my foot which means how deep my foot will be and you know I, I see lots of beginners that are afraid to go down um, give yourself that little bit of extra room while you're throwing it so you can have a nice deep foot um, it's fun to decorate the inside of the foot it makes you look like a true craftsman and um, it gives you a chance to take out excess weight as well. So um, getting rid of that extra is important. You want your pieces to be a joy to use and to be the appropriate weight for the object. And um, when I say that, you know, a lot of people have this idea that everything should be as light as a feather, and that's not the case. Um, we wouldn't want, uh, you know, a mixing bowl that's, you know, a workhorse in the kitchen. That that needs to have a little bit of heft to it so it can withstand all the work you're going to put in, put in, use it for. Um, same thing is true for for something like a casserole dish. I'm not going to put a carved foot on a casserole dish because it needs to sit on a flat oven and a flat rack in the oven and we need it to be thermal so it keeps things warm and it's easy to bake with so therefore we're going to be a little bit thicker so it all depends on what you're using for instance i'm 
I used to be a florist before I became a ceramic artist and vases need to have some weight in the bottom. The reason for that is um, anybody wants a nice big floral design but you need something that, that's just as beautiful to hold the flowers that isn't foam which is not good for the environment. Just cut flowers I think is best. Um, but a vase with a little bit of heft in the bottom is your friend when it comes to floral design. So those are just some examples of things that you do not want to be like a feather. A soup bowl would be another one. You know, that needs to be sturdy. Just defining where that foot starts. Remember, all your pieces um, should blend together seamlessly like it's all one piece. They all look like they belong together, but they should be defined. In other words, there should be definition between where the foot ends and the body and the belly of my piece begins. And that's, this is what I mean by definition. See, you can see what's happening. So now I'm just gonna soften this edge a little more. It's coming in even, I don't wanna fuss with it too much more. enough that I can decorate the bottom and it feels pretty good. I think we're going to put a spout on this guy. 